it helped accelerate the outer wheel and the under the inside wheel was being under rotated and it would help then reduce understeer uh, and bring the okay. nose in. Oh wow, that sounds incredibly difficult. I've seen that you you tested a couple of really interesting cars or driven a couple of well many really interesting cars. In particular, um the McLaren that had two brake pedals and the Williams, I think it was the um FW15 that had the CVT gearbox. Can you tell us a little bit more about those cars? Sure. Well, the CVT, the constantly variable transmission, uh, I think it was a Belgian com- uh, company that, uh, Belgian or Dutch, that were working on that with Williams. And Patrick Head loved all all the, the, the sort of, you know, potential tech innovations. Uh, there was also another gearbox we worked on with an American chap called the Wiseman, which I think had, it, it wasn't like the CVT where it's a big, steel band that moves between these hydraulic cones and changes the the gearing the Weisman I think had like you know I don't know 40 gears or something I I, I don't remember right. exactly where it, it, it just moved up and down the shaft I remember testing it at Pembry and it regularly blew oh, up Pembry yeah yeah it would regularly <laughs> blow up and there would be bits of metal bouncing down the side of the track beside <laughs> me but the CVT was uh, I tested that at Silverstone and it was a strange one because the RPM, it, it, the theory was that it got the engine to the RPM where the torque was at its best and it would kind yeah. of stay there and rise up. So when you came into a corner, instead of the sort of classic, you know, zoom, 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 as the engine comes down the RPM, it would uh, it would be like, yeah. so you'd be braking and slowing down, but yet the RPM would still be like... 15,000 yeah. RPM. <laughs> <laughs> so it was slightly uncomfortable. Uh, and both of uh, the Weisman box, I think just never ran reliably and the CVT got banned by the FIA before it ever was introduced. So um, a shame, but it was good fun to do that. And then the the braking system on the McLaren, it was uh, Steve Nichols, who was a designer there, who came up with the idea. And it was, it was very simple in that the additional pedal would uh, act on the rear caliper depending on a switch, which was a solenoid switch. So if you switched it to the right on the steering wheel, it would activate oh, right. the right rear brake caliper. And if you switched it to the left, it would activate only the uh, left rear caliper. So what Mika and I had to do was initially when we tested it, we thought, you well, you just push it and the car would then slow down the inside axle a bit like a tank and it would yeah. rotate the car. But what happened is it would not really lock the inside wheel, but it would certainly under rotate the inside wheel and you would have an oversteer moment. So what we had to mm. learn to do independently and quite quickly was that you ran the throttle and the brake at the same time. So you would brake, say, for a you know, fifth gear corner a little bit down the gear, and then you would go back on the throttle and on the fiddle brake or the extra brake pedal at the same time. So you would go, you know, you're basically like that. And what yeah. it did was it helped accelerate the outer wheel and the under the inside wheel was being under rotated and it would help then reduce understeer uh, and bring the okay. nose in. Oh, wow. That sounds incredibly difficult. Yeah, uh, well, but <laughs> as you know, though, anything that makes you go better, go faster, you learn how to do it pretty you quickly. It yeah, so we figured it yeah. out and we raced with that for, I think, a year and a half or, or, or you know, best part of uh, a year and a bit. And then... Oh, did you? It got okay. exp- yeah, it was on the 97 car. And yeah. and then it was the 98 car. I think uh, Nürburgring, Mika and I were running one, two. Mika blew up and then I'm leading. And then so, like a lap yeah. later or two laps later, I blew up in the, in front of the start finish, exactly where he'd blown up. And we, we parked the cars, you know, beside each other. And then Peter Fox took a photograph inside the cockpit. Yes. And that's that's where it then was brought to people's attention. And then the FIA, um, you know, deemed it not to be legal. But the the ninety eight car was was still so good. We, we you know we continued to have success with it, and Mika won the championship. So it was a tool to help tune the car, but it wasn't the be all and end all. You know, the be all and end all is always going to be aerodynamics and um, yeah. and horsepower. 